28th December 1885, Gokul Das Tejpal Sanskrit College, Bombay. It was a defining historical moment which would later prove to be a landmark, attended by 72 distinguished delegates from all over India. Calcutta, Allahabad, Bombay, Pune, Madras and a few British civil servants who were sympathetic to the aspirations of the educated Indians. The Indian National Congress was founded with the limited and humble demand for greater participation by Indians in the political and administrative services. The first resolution was Try and bring Indians together on a common platform. Try and air their grievances to the British rulers. We support! We support. This small organization of Indian Western educated elite metamorphosed into a revolution and struggle of over 70 million people and was finally rewarded complete independence from the British rule. 15th August 1947. We made a tryst with destiny and now the time comes when we shall redeem our pledge, not only or in full measure, but very substantially. One of the earliest nationalist leaders fighting for the rights of Indians was the grand old man of India, Dadabhai Nauroji. Dadabhai spent his entire life in the service of the nation. Dadabhai Nauroji was born on 4th September 1825 in an area called Khadak in Mumbai, then known as Bombay. His father, Nauroji Palonji Dordi, was a poor Parsi priest whose ancestors had settled in Nausari in Gujarat. Dadabhai's father passed away when he was four. He was brought up by his mother Manikbai with the help of her brother. Dadabhai was brought up in the true Parsi tradition. Parsis are of ancient Persian descent and belong to the Indo-European branch of Aryans. The Parsis were originally refugees from Persia, the current day Iran. More than thousand years ago, a group of tired Zoroastrian refugees fleeing religious persecution in Iran arrived in India at Sanjan. Sanjan, a tiny principality about 100 kilometers north of present-day Mumbai, was ruled by Jadi Rana. According to legend, the king was not too keen on allowing foreign refugees to settle in his tiny kingdom. One of the Zoroastrian priests asked the king for a bowl of milk filled to the brim. The priest gently took a teaspoon of sugar and stirred it into the milk without spilling a drop. He then said to the king, if you take us into your kingdom, we will be like the sugar in the milk. We will blend in with you, but we will also make your kingdom sweeter. The king understood this astute gesture and graciously allowed them to stay. Since then, this group and who followed added sweetness to local life and flourished. The Parsis adopted local customs and languages and therefore were able to be assimilated more easily into India. And yet, they always hold their core beliefs intact, which they live by no matter where they settle down. We have adopted all the superficial ethnic qualities, which are very important. We wear the sari, we speak Gujarati, we wear the Gujarati sari, we, uh, we lay down our arms, we have given up all the pure Iranian characteristics. But we retain a core of our tradition in which equality, justice, environmental, strong environmental consciousness and a belief in the holistic concept of body and soul, these are very, very important. Dada Bhai was brought up like all the Parsis of his time, who had already assimilated into the culture of Gujarat. However, they had not relinquished their own traditions. These had been passed down orally through the ages. The oral tradition included prayers, customs, 
rites of passage and some heroic legends that are still extant. These are jealously guarded by the adults but not extensively known to the younger generation. This script is Avastan script mm -hmm. and most of our prayers are written in it. They have been translated into Persian and now from Persian to Gujarati, which even our children do not know. So it's now translated into English and these are the prayers they read right now with their meaning. Khudavind, khavind, o parvar degar, namu tari dadga nehu kusar, thayo roj akhir karu thai cherar, mane saru jagma ne buddhi tua, De bhulo sudharu hare roj viroj Bhalai vadharun kare nitya khoj Ketai madathi urakhu vivek Manashni gavashni kunashni nek Since the last 1381 years, we Parsis or Zarastans, we are both the different sides of the same coin have lived here peacefully, we have accepted India as our motherland and uh, we have integrated into the mainstream of Indian society. Down the centuries, many social and cultural customs of Gujarat have become intrinsic parts of Parsi tradition. But the religion has remained pristine and the core beliefs are unchanged from birth to end at the Dokma, the Tower of Silence. Zoroastrianism is the world's most ancient revealed monotheistic religion, older than Christianity by more than 2,000 years. It has survived persecution and the destruction of most of its recorded history and tenets. Joy comes to the one who brings joy unto others. Ours is a perfecting world. It is man's duty to be hamkar with Ahura Mazda in combating evil in its various forms. We are soldiers of Ahura Mazda. We are girded up with our kasti to fight for the good thoughts, good words, good deeds, to fight for the good of this world. So ours is not a philosophy of retirement. Ours is a philosophy of action. Dada Bhai was brought up in this faith of action in the service of humanity. Dada Bhai also went through all the distinct Parsi rites of passage that start at birth and continue with the Navjot, meaning new light ceremony. This is similar to the Catholic confirmation and the Hindu thread ceremony. The child, male or female, is initiated into the Zoroastrian faith by donning a sacred soft muslin undershirt called Sadra and over it a sacred cord called Kusti. The marriage ceremony always takes place after sunset when the first star of the evening is sighted. This custom has its origin in the promise given to Jadirana and continues till date. Both the Navjot and marriage ceremonies embody the spirit of free choice. Dada Bhai was married at an early age of 11 to Gulbai. Uh, she was very young when yeah, they got married. She was 11 and I think she was 9. In Bombay, he was educated at the Elphinstone Institution. He proved to be a brilliant student. His teacher, Professor Orliba, called him the Promise of India. In 1854, Dada Bhai was appointed Professor of Mathematics and Natural Philosophy at his alma mater. He described it as the greatest event of his early career. Dada Bhai was inspired by Raja Ram Mohan Roy, his predecessor who advocated women's education and social justice for women. Dada Bhai believed that only reform could redeem society and enrich a civilization through education, thus emancipating both men and women. Dada Bhai took up the cause of girl education. 
The first Parsi girls' school was opened in 1849 at the instance of Dada Bhai, Kharshe Ji R. Kama and other friends who supported the cause of female education. Funds were raised for this purpose. Dada Bhai would tell his grandchildren how he used to go from house to house to persuade parents and guardians to allow teachers to teach the girls in their verandas. Some parents threatened to throw him down the stairs for this proposal. Dada Bhai became an ardent advocate of free education and of the principle that every child should have the opportunity of receiving all the education it is capable of assimilating, regardless of whether it is born poor or rich. Dada Bhai said later, This was the foundation of my whole life career. Education was then entirely free. Had there been levied the fees of the present day, my mother would not have been able to pay them. Dada Bhai went on to help form, found and fund many associations and institutions. The Students' Literary and Scientific Society, the Society for the Promotion of Knowledge, the Irani Fund, the Widow Remarriage Association. When he was still a professor, Dada Bhai started getting interested in politics. One of the grievances of Indians then was their exclusion from the civil service and the legislative councils. Dada Bhai took up this issue. On August 26, 1852, the first political association of Bombay, the Bombay Association, was formed. It was here that Dada Bhai made his maiden speech for political reform. He said people should combine to give expression to their convictions and the united voice must reach the British rulers. Dada Bhai, along with his friend Khurshedji Nusirwanji Kama, started Rast Goftar, a journal in Gujarati to combat ignorance and fanaticism. He was an active member of the Bombay branch of the Royal Asiatic Society and the Philosophic Institute of Bombay. He helped formation of the Royal Asiatic Library and many other important institutes and associations. In the year 1855, Dada Bhai accepted the offer of Kama's trading company to work with them in England. He set sail for London. However, this work stint lasted only four years and later Dada Bhai left the firm and started his own company trading in cotton. He lived in India and in London and addressed large gatherings wrote numerous articles and papers, all with the intention of securing India's rights. Indians have unanimously, earnestly and emphatically declared that the system of rule that they are now under should not continue to be. For you, I recall, what 50 years ago Mount Stuart Elphinstone said, It is in vain to endeavor to rule Indians on principles only suited to a slavish and ignorant population. Here is a clear issue between the rulers and the people. The rulers say, We shall rule, but only as foreign invaders with the result of draining the country of its wealth. While the ruled are saying for the first time, that shall not be. The archives reflect a specific feature of Dadabhai Naroji's relentless work. He has written more than 50,000 papers, letters, including the ones to the King of Iran, World Theological Congress and others. His was a very British method to beat the British at their own game. Because he thought the first most important thing was acceptability. That he meant well. He was not only interested in throwing out the British, but he was interested in arguing his case, winning them over. 
So winning them over and thinking that economic freedom was not enough. Political freedom was prerequisite. He stood for election to the British Parliament from Holborn in 1886. He lost, but he continued to pursue his political ambition. He again contested as the Liberal candidate from the constituency of Central Finsbury and won. His election was challenged as he won by only five votes. The court decreed he was the winner. He launched an agitation to form a royal commission of inquiry into matters pertaining to India and was a member of the royal commission set up to look into Indian demands. Dadabhai participated in several debates in the British Parliament. He said, India has to pay for European services in both countries. 200 million rupees annually. We work for the British and for the British profits. And the Indians are in such a way worse off than the southern slaves. The benefits received by the Indians are insignificant when compared with Britain's benefits. And you may create an empire by brute force, but you will never maintain it except by moral force, founded on justice and righteousness. After years of study, he published his monumental work, Poverty and Un-British Rule in India. Here is a, a confession in the title itself, that he is frustrated with the British sense of justice. And therefore, he tells the British that your attitude towards India is an un-British-like and therefore, he becomes more vocal and that gets expressed in the appointment of a Welby Commission. British government finally concede that Indian finances were misappropriated and they appoint a commission. Here he has made much more than what the moderates wanted. It is no pleasure for me to dwell on the wretched condition of India's people. None will rejoice more than myself if my views are proved to be mistaken. But the sum total of my research is that without any wish for the good of India, England has in reality been the most disastrous and destructive invader of India. Although dubbed a moderate, he was a rebel. His writings and actions say it all. Dada Bhai proved that the average annual income of an Indian was barely rupees 27. He wrote a letter to his old neighbor in Nausari, Jamshed Ji Tata, in 1903, in which he refers to the drain theory in simple words. proportion of monies which went to England compared to what we have in India. That was the drain theory in very simple terms. And drain on these three things that to rule us, to subjugate us, you are taking our own monies to do this. So unravel the bundle, pour in more money. We are not asking you to live tomorrow. And let us be the masters of our own destiny. Today, if we study the history of economic thought in India, the drain theory is the starting point. His interests were broad, his thinking forward-looking and for the benefit of all. One of his major interests was education. Dadabhai submitted a note to the Education Commission of 1882, in which he strongly recommended the appointment of Indian professors and education of girls. He said, it is my lifelong conviction that higher education must not only be maintained as it is, 
but much more largely extended. Without the head, the body will be worthless. Higher education is the hope and promise of India. His is really the greatest name that we have in the history of modern India from the latter half of the 19th century to the beginning of the 20th century. Being in England, he was in touch with all the progressive movements of his time. There was hardly one movement of reform, regeneration, with which Dada Bhai Noraji was not connected. While recognizing the need for reform in the British administrative system, he found much need of reform in his community. He founded the Rahnumai Mazdiashna, the guide to the worshippers of God. Its objective was reforming Parsi religious practices and austerity in marriages and other customs. Had Dada Bhai not lost his father when he was four, he might have been ordained as a priest. Yet, the tradition of being pure in thought, word and deed was so strong that Dada Bhai was the ideal Parsi. Because of the Indian caste system, Zoroastrian women or Parsi women had become suppressed. He wanted to reverse this, not just for Parsis, but for all women. And that is why I think he drew a lot on his knowledge of Zoroastrianism for equality of all women. A social reformer, Karsandas Mulji, wrote against a religious practice of a certain sect, wherein all newly wed brides spent their first night with the priest. Dada Bhai publicly supported Mulji in this campaign in Rast Goftar. The sect accused the detractors of slander and took them to court. The then justice, Matthew Arnold, gave judgment. It said, what is ethically and morally wrong cannot be theologically right. The Parsis contributed their genius in every walk of life. Their contribution to the national freedom movement, spread of education, social reform, law and judiciary, arts and sciences, sports, and to the development of business and industry is phenomenally large especially considering that Parsis are a minuscule minority. The peak population touched 1,14,000 in 1941, and the 2001 census showed the population at about 69,000. The challenge before this community today is finding solutions to its steadily declining numbers. Parsis are gladly driven to charity due to their religious ethos. Zarathustra asks his followers to attain happiness by making others happy. Parsis believe that to remove poverty, disease and suffering is not only a religious duty, but an act of spiritual merit, depriving evil of sustenance. In charity and philanthropy, Parsis remain unequaled. For a man, who belong to the smallest minority to have acquired that esteem all over the country. He's probably the best known Indian of his time. By the time Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi was going to London to study at the bar, Dada Bhai was already a well-known figure fighting for Indian rights. Gandhi wrote to him asking for guidance and help and met him as a respected senior in London. Welcome to London, Mr. Gandhi. Thank you, sir. We Indians are a very small community here, but they will definitely welcome you too. Mm. Tomorrow we have a meeting of East Indian Association with lunch. Why don't you come and join with us? Yes, sir. Dada Bhai tried for years to get self-rule for India by constitutional means. Finally, he realized this was not going to work and he became an advocate of Swaraj. For a man like this to have become the president of the Congress three times, in 1886, in 1893, and in 1906, was a remarkable achievement. It was left to him to come to India in 1906 and declare that Swaraj was our political objective. Yeah. 
Dada Bhai was influenced by thinkers like Firdausi, Karl Marx, books like Improvement of Mind by Watt, the works of Carlyle, Mill and Herbert Spencer. His constant companions were The Duties of the Zoroastrians and Shahnama. Dada Bhai was an intellectual of high order and simultaneously a practical as well as principled man. Dada Bhai was a true Parsi who lived by the principles of his faith. Humara, Hukta, Huvarashtha, meaning good thoughts, good words, good deeds. These principles guided him always. Dada Bhai became a legend in his lifetime. As intelligent refugees, the Parsis did guard their own ethnic, cultural and religious identity with fierce pride. Their literacy rate is 100%. No Parsi today is homeless. They were always mindful of their status and made friends wherever they went. As an ethnic group, Parsis have excelled in a way no other community has and perhaps because of their upbringing and strong religious belief. There is, in the Zoroastrian creed, a simplicity that defies challenge. Be good, do good, think good and fight evil. Listen to your conscience, but laugh and enjoy life. To give you some idea of the esteem in which he was held by Indians of his generation, for example, Gandhiji, whom we today call the father of the nation, called Dada Bhai the father of the nation in 1910. Gandhiji's political leader, Gokhale, said about him that to go and see Dada Bhai Noraji is like going on a pilgrimage. Gokhale's own master, Mahadev Govind Ranade, said about Dada Bhai, that he held him, he looked upon him almost as a teacher. For a man who inspired the reverence of three generations of Indians in his own lifetime, it was a remarkable achievement. Dada Bhai died at the age of 93 in Bombay in 1917. After a lifetime of service to the nation, today, Almost a century after his passing away, the issues that Dada Bhai fought for are still alive and relevant. Issues such as education of girls, widow remarriage, the importance of widespread higher education, upliftment of all to higher standards of harmony and living. A hundred years ago, he said, I have never worked in any other spirit than that I am an Indian and owe duty to my country and all my countrymen. Whether I am a Hindu, a Mohammedan, a Parsi, a Christian, or of any other creed, I am above all an Indian. Our country is India. Our nationality is Indian. Our continuing commitment to these causes is the legacy of Dada Bhai Naoroji. Truly, the grand old man of India.